I would, and I would love to take a picture with him because I've been a big fan. So, 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 one second. I'm a huge, huge fan. So, thank you so much. So now it's all to the superstar. అందరికి నా హృదయపూర్వక నమస్కారం ఐ బౌ అండ్ పే మై హోల్ హార్ట్ రెస్పెక్ట్ టు ద డివినిటీ ఇన్ ఈచ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ యూ టు ద ఆనరబుల్ మేయర్ Shri Mr. Jim Donches, an Honorable Congressman, Paul Hodes, and Senator Betty Lashy, and Shri Upendra Chivukula, and Shri Lata Mangan Pudi, and Sister Paula, and to the rest of the dignitaries, I bow to you all with my wholehearted respects from india and from the behalf of indian people when i heard shri lata mangin puri talking about the indian values it reminded me of an incident of my mother when i was a kid of around 9 year old i used to see my mother every evening she used to switch on the lights and she used to silently pray for a few seconds after watching her few times and few days i asked my mother i asked amma which god are you praying she said thomas alva edison and she said if thomas alva edison wouldn't have invented the light bulb this world would have been still in darkness that's why i would like to thank him every day this is the value an average indian mother teaches to her kids that's why no matter where indians go they take these values to the host country and they give best to the society which host them so because of this one of these i was uh, reading a book about mr uh, nani palki wala in 70s he was the indian ambassador who used to work in new york so he said each and every ma- management whom he used to go and meet they used to tell how indians are so good and how well they contribute for the american society and he, they were profusely they used to thank him for the greatest human resources india has developed for the world and for the america and for me i was never interested in politics for me i was always interested the way how society functions right from my childhood though i was not highly educated i was a school dropout but i had never stopped learning still i'm a student i still i like keep learning and still i like keep studying uh, right from my childhood i never aspired to be an actor and i never liked acting always i wanted to know how the society functions so for me the politics being in politics is a natural progression to me but from in, from being in cinema by an actor it is very difficult for me to dance with heroines and to say some kind of dialogues it, i feel very awkward to say that in reality but you tell me to fight for the people 
for the problems people face in real life, I feel very alive. I will feel good about it. I never had any risk. Some for me, I want the happiness of other, other men, my fellow men, my countrymen, people who are surrounded around me. I want their happiness first. For me, that is the value of India, where the deep-rooted value of India, the traditional value of India, the values of Vedas, that's what they teach us. Unless, but as time goes by, the values will be corroded, will get corrupted because of a few selfish individuals. Do we keep quiet? Do we, do we have to, finally, without even saying a word, do we have to confine to our fears or do we have to break the barriers of our fear and be courageous and confront whoever is corroding the society and whoever is dividing the society? For me, that kind of attitude, the prevailing attitude in our contemporary political situation, in our contemporary politicians, made me, it created deep resentment in me. I kept quiet for so many years, right from my childhood. I know as a kid, always there was a big, great angst and pain in me. But after some time, after becoming an actor, I was successful, I was good, but I never felt the comfort in me. I could never feel the adoration and love is showered on me. I never felt good. For me, you give me so much of love. You give me so much of adoration. Mere doing influence, mere entertaining you was not satisfying me. So unless I come out and address the issues what people are facing, then only I felt some kind of relief. For me, the reason to establish Janasena, I said it is meant people's army. This army doesn't have guns, but it has the courageous hearts as a weapon. That's it. There's a saying in Telugu, it's called Dhairya Sahas Lakshmi. It means when you have the courage, everything follows. Even the wealth follows, prosperity follows. But if you lose courage, you lose everything. That's why I always I prefer to have courage than wealth. I'm okay to lose wealth, I'm okay to lose money. But I prefer to have courage in each and every cell of my body. And I want you that what do we Indians lack? When we talk about India, I feel great pride. I take humongous pride in being an Indian. That's the reason in all my films, I used to put some kind of the nationality, the nationalism in as a part of my, instead of dancing with the girls and heroines, I prefer to do songs on nationalism, because sometimes our freedom we have, we had achieved, we take it for granted. But do we know how much blood and how much had lives had been sacrificed for the freedom we are enjoying today? I want everyone to, I want to remind to everyone to at what cost we had the freedom and how we are enjoying it, by whose cost? But there are lives, millions of lives had been sacrificed for the future generations and those were the leaders. We have to remind them and we have to be grateful to them for that reason. I never lost the commitment and the madness to love my country. I had never lost it. That's the reason you used to see in the form of songs, in the first, especially in the beginning of the film, I used to do that kind of songs. Just to tell you, we should never lose the respect and the value and the commitment and the love for our nation and for our society and for our country. That's the reason I used to do. I want to tell you,
cultural diversity. India is a unity in diversity. That's what we say. That's our the main country slogan, unity and diversity. We feel geographically India feels as one, but still culturally we have to still integrate. Still the integration is yet to happen. When I established Janasena, the reason was not state separation. For me, forming one more state is not going to give any uh, is not going to give me any show, any difference in my life. But what I'm scared is because of the complacent attitude of our contemporary politicians, when it is damaging the society, it gives me mad pain. For example, if you keep on an issue, if there is a small problem, if you delay it, it becomes a crisis. If the crisis cannot be handled, it becomes a disaster. The contemporary Indian political system or situation or people, they don't know, they don't address the issue when it's at a problematic level. Unless it becomes a crisis, unless it becomes a disaster, they won't address it. I hated that attitude in our political class. For me, it's nice, it's a comfortable life to be as an actor. I make millions and I make crores of money. I pay crores of taxes. But for me, it is very painful to see people in suffering. We say that development, we have a great development in our country. True, there's a great development. But at the cost of whom? To whom it is reaching? It is reaching to only a particular people and particular classes. Well, then what about the rest of the people? Who's going to talk about them? Who's going to talk on their behalf? If I'm very comfortable, I have a lot of friends, I don't have to antagonize anyone. If I really keep my mouth shut, I would have enjoyed a lot of privileges. But instead of, in spite of that, I would like to walk out, I would like to go against wherever the injustice is happening, I would like to address that. I would like to stand by the people who are the victims. So for me, when I had seen the divisiveness in our country, Nani Palkiwala, who is my great role model, who worked as a Ambassador of India in Amer Amer 70s America, Ambassador for India. For me, he says, India is a collection of communities. There are Maharashtrians, there are Andhras, there are Telanganites, there are Tamils, Kashmiris, there are Hindi, non Hindi, but there is no Indian. The Indian is missing in India. But for me, that is such a profound statement. And in the, still the divisiveness is becoming a caste. We are a selection of caste. We have vertically, we're dividing too many times. India's disease is divisiveness. Somewhere we have to stop the madness of this divisiveness. Somewhere we have to feel that we are one. We belong to one nation. Unless, unless, we feel as one, we act as one. We cannot achieve, we cannot attain the goals intended for the greatness of our nation. So Swami Sri Aurobindo says, India is the Godhead. India can be the leading light for the rest of the nations of their spiritual strength. Unless we all become one as a nation, we can have our differences. That's what I keep telling my friends. I said we can speak different languages, we can have different value systems, but somewhere deep down all of us should feel that we, should, we need each other to survive. Unless we don't feel the affinity, we don't feel the brotherhood, we can't contain ourselves as one single unit called India. The reason why I established Janasena, it's okay to the state to get separated. My anger on the political class and the contemporary politicians was when the issue was around 30 years back, 
the result is the mistakes con consistently done by the politicians of generations, I mean, say, like, every five years, like, the government changes, but the legacy continued of complacent the attitude was continued. But the result, who we are paying it, the mistakes done by our elders, we are, will be paying the mistake. We'll be paying for their mistakes. And why should a mistake done by as a year politician, why I have to face the problem? Why I have to face the brunt? That was my anger. And no one talks about it. Everyone is in a blaming business. A guy is like this, these Andras are like that, this Telugana, Telangana is like this. For me, the issue is not about Telangana or Andhra or some other region or sub-region. The issue is, if all the lawmakers, the political executives, if they would have done their job, if they would have addressed the issues at a problematic level, we wouldn't have achieved, we wouldn't have gone towards the disastrous side. That's the reason I came into politics to address this disease called divisiveness in India, because it is going to hurt the integrity of our nation. And today we feel everyone goes to Gandhiji. We talk great about Gandhiji to, in reality, how much we are practicing the values which they taught us. We don't follow them. It's okay. We garland them. We, we, bow, we bow to them. We respect to them. In reality, we never practice it. At the same time, Ambedkar, we like to say that we need a casteless society. Everyone feels they show that we respect Ambedkar. In reality, they don't practice it. For me, I prefer to be a man of action than a man of words. Because empty words, does it, it's not backed by actions, it doesn't reach anywhere. It is a mere empty rhetoric. Recent, just now, my friend Sharad Marad saying that, well, she said something that I had given money back. The reason, People who backed us, who are the stakeholders of our business, if we don't stand by them, who else is going to stand by? I don't want to be a selfish guy. Okay, I made my job. I did my job. I made some money. I'm going to go back home. But I can't sleep like that. I feel guilty. I want, as Sri Lata Manganipudi says, as you migrated to America, I want you, and this is what I believe in, we can't behave as an exclusive society. We have to somewhere bring our core values. We should confine, we should keep it with us. At the same time, we have to integrate with the whole society. And we should integrate, and also we should participate. If we don't participate, what happens is, it creates a, some kind of animosity. And always these guys work and they take away and they're not becoming a part, they're not contributing anything. That creates a, some kind of animosity. That's the reason all of us, somehow we should participate in the host country we, wherever we are, either it could be US or it could be any other country or Europe, somewhere we have to contribute back. Unless we, can't, we don't contribute back, it is going to create a, some kind of a situation of animosity which is not good for anyone. And I'm sorry, I'm not prepared. I'm just saying, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and for me, when I established Genesee, and my pain is only one, one thing is, I used to go to, when I, Mr. Chirinji Garu, who was my, who was my brother, <laughs> When we, and before that, before coming, uh, establishing Genesena, you know, I started a uh, NGO organization called the Common Men Protection Force, it's called CPF. When I, why I did that was, there is so much injustice, so much of injustice. I could see everywhere I go, this mad injustice. Though I was acting, I used to see pain, I used to see pain all over. Even if I shoot somewhere, someone or the other, they come to me 
they come for my help, or sometimes incidents do happen like this, where they put their sick child on my lap and tell them, Anna, can you do something for this? My child is sick, we don't know where to go. And they are very poor people. They can't afford any kind of uh, good medication, good medical facilities. But I see there one side, India, my pain is at a personal level, I can help few people, two or three. I can go on, okay, I can spend my entire money. But that's not going to solve the nation's problems. For me, politics is a holy job. Everyone says politics is a dirty job. For me, politics is a very holy and holy and holy job. Always the Constitution of America, the Constitution of India, they are the most noble things. They are the most noble works. With a great, with a noble intent, it was written. It is not the Constitution fail, it is the people to keep up the Constitution. They fail, it is not the Constitution, it is not the fault of the Constitution. <laughs> For me, I felt this way. When each one of us, if we don't contribute in our own nice way, manner, whatever way, whichever way, for me, I thought being an actor, how much, what can I do? It's easy to say in two and a half hours, I can talk a lot. I can fight with the bad guys. I can solve the issues. I can go back home and I can sleep. It's a comfortable thing for me. But I question myself. To come into real life and face the real issues is a real challenge. The only way I realized is come into politics. Politics is not, didn't come to me after I became an actor. Ever since I was a kid, I never knew it was called politics, but I always I thought, how could we address the problem? For every issue I used to face, I used to go to the core. Where is the root cause? What exactly is the root cause? For me, unless, I always used to touch the root cause. For me, the answer li used to lie in politics. Unless the political body, the decision-making body, unless you ad they address it, it trickles down, and only it can transform the society. The Indian society, we say, yatha raja and tatha praja. As the ruler, so the people. We take the attitude of our rulers, People take the attitude of our rulers. Imagine when we were fighting for our freedom from British, there used to be a galaxy of politicians, galaxy of leaders who used to inspire us. They were selfless, they were brave, and they used to go to any extreme for the love of, the, of our nation. But after 30, 40 years, Today, every politician, at least most of them, not that I'm not denying that, people are not there, they are there, but the percentage has become minimal. They, are, they have become a minority. So look at them, everyone has become a self-serving. Max is, they used to go to the party, they used to work for their party, their interest is to promote their party, not the interest of the people. So what is the damage it is doing? Imagine today, we have such a fantastic growth, economic growth. India is growing irrespective of all the failures, irrespective of all the uh, complacent attitude of politic, politicians and politics. But still, the country is growing. It is because the individuals are damn good in our country. The individuals are powerful. The individuals are courageous. The individuals have the integrity. But where we fail as a nation, because we remain as a collection of individuals, not as one Indian. That's the problem. That's what we have to address. <laughs> and I request you, see politics. I, do, I want you to come out of your comfort zones. That doesn't mean you, that does not mean you have to come out onto the roads and you have to do a protest. No, it, it, not necessarily to be that. Even sitting in your drawing room, sharing one good thought with your friend of yours, with your family members. And I want you to talk about India is getting crippled by divisiveness. For me, India is one. 
people say that I belong to one caste, people say that I belong to one region, people say I belong to one religion. For me, either a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian or a Sikh, anyone, they feel the same to me because we're filled with the same blood, <laughs> same human anatomy. For me, America is the greatest inspiration. The American founding fathers of America, they were the greatest inspiration for me. Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. For me, I'm a mad lover of Henry David Thoreau. Because for me, the big thing was I used to experiment what he said in Walden Pond, completely cutting off and living in the most frugal means. I used to do that after, especially after the film Johnny. For one year, it disappeared. And I was trying to live like Henry David Thoreau, but I felt it was quite expensive for me because I have to sit in my farm, not doing my, uh, any business or not working, and it costed me a crore of rupees to live, live like uh, Henry David Thoreau. So the, but what I, de what I feel is we have to be practical how much we can do. I don't want to impose, even in every press interview I say, I'm quite idealistic for myself. And also I accept my own imperfections. And I want the same thing to be applied to each one of you. That is not Pavanism. There's no such thing as Pavanism. Because I tell you my friends, my brothers, my sisters, I tell you, I love you. I madly love you. Because we have enough isms. Isms are destroying the country, destroying the nations. We do have enough. We need just one ism. It's called humanism. We need just one humanism. For me, I'm worried about, imagine India as one community, then a collection of a Telugu, a collection of Tamils or Maharashtrians, if India behaves as one community, as one nation, even in America, it is going to do a great benefit for the Indians as expatriates and also for the host country, America. In that way, both will get benefited. Unless we divide ourselves, it is only we are showing our weakness and nothing else. And I want you to look at politics I want you to establish, I want you to do good for this nation called America. And I want you to, how much ever you contribute back to the country we came from, in, in your own way, maybe it could be a kind word. At least a healing word is enough. One healing word makes all the difference. And I want you to heal the country which is being divided consistently. The verticals are increasing every day. It could be a caste, it could be a different caste between within Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, we call it as uh, uh, Kapu or Nanka, Nankama, Reddy. This is all, you know, what happens, I want you to go beyond this caste. When we come back to, um, when we go to America, we can't see the difference. I don't understand this caste. Unless we feel as one, we go beyond this caste. I'm telling you, it is very humiliating and demeaning for me to tell my kids that you are a caste. I hate that attitude. And where is this? How can you differentiate? You tell me today, a man who doesn't know anything about me, if they tell me, what this man's caste? What is the, how could you make out unless someone says it? It is just a feeling, caste is just a feeling. Nothing is gonna change. Caste is going to, for me, the other day they were telling me that you have a caste feeling. I said, I don't even have a family feeling. Forget about caste. For me, I'm Indian. The reason is, the reason is I want the best for our country, for our people, and for our communities. That's the reason. I, for me, I don't get into that kind of low-level thinking called caste. If someone does it, I can understand. I don't find fault with them, but I wouldn't request them I want you to grow beyond that. I want you to go above that. When I needed money, simply, for example, for me, I'll give you an example. If you go to a cinema, 
As long as the cinema is entertaining you, you don't see who is performing there. Whether you belong to your family, it could be a caste, it could be region, religion, doesn't make it irrelevant. But when you're able to enjoy who is performing there, the performance or the outcome of the film, there is a need for you to think of who this man is. Suddenly, why would we get that extra edge? There is no need for it. I want you to go beyond this. Because this is what is going to divide. Unless we correct our thought process, unless we correct ourselves, we will be always weak as nation. Because unless I want the state of Telangana and the state of Andhra Pradesh should be the shining examples for the entire India. And we have the ability, my friends. We have the strength. I want to say, I believe in this adversity reveals true character. We have great adverse conditions. And we should take them as challenges. We have to confront them. We have to show our strength. And that's why I would request you all to be the shining light, to be the leading examples for the entire country, to show the solidarity of Indianness, then, a come, then the being a divisive, showing a divisive attitude in form of a caste, in form of a religion, in form of a region. I want you to be collectively as one India and one India and one. For me, for me, the words of Kennedy, ask not what country has done to you, ask what you, can you do for your country. For me, that those simple words, the most powerful words, shaped my thinking. And Martin Luther King Jr., who fought, who led the civil disobedience, civil civil rights movement is a great inspiration for me. Always, every day, I read their lines, I read their books. And I want you to understand the culture, wherever I was, you're staying in the U.S., I want you to read, know the founding fathers are the people who fought for civil rights, and I want to know the hardships. Unless we know the hardships of our founding fathers, we don't know the value of our freedom, what we are achieving today, what we are enjoying today. I want you to know that in that way, we can never trivialize, we can never go into the narrow-minded thinking called divisiveness. I want you to really, if something, if I ask the young friends of mine, my brothers and sisters, this is what I can tell you. I want you to go back and read about each and every individual who fought to have a good society around them. Look at their Read their biographies. They really help you, and they really shape your thinking. And I want, through genocide, of what I would like to do, for me is to empower women. And India really suffers in, when it comes to the women. The basic personal hygiene for a growing girl is missing in our country. And there's so many issues when, when it comes to education. There are no good, we, everyone says, even Sri Lata Mangin Pudi, we are having a conversation yesterday, today morning. And we say we have a great demographic dividend. We're talking about uh, between the 19 to the 28, the age is, the, we have great people, great percentage of youth is there. But unless we channelize them as a powerful and potent energy, which we could channelize, for the betterment of a society, it is going to be a devastating situation than a, a dividend. That's what we have to understand. That's the reason I want you to guide people around you. First, I want you to educate yourself. Education is not about degrees. Education is not about scientific achievements. It is also about human angle to it. Unless we feel, unless we feel what is the right humanness? Humanness is missing in our country. Educate yourself in humanity, which is very essential for anything to survive. That's all I would like to say. And my last words would be, I thank you for the mayor, for, for, for the recognition you had given me, and also Sri Upendra Chivukula. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that you had given me the recognition. And to Sri Paul Hodes, we had uh, a great conversation where I was uh, conversing with him. I had lunch with him. And 
Your inspiration is contagious, sir. You're inspiring me. And it's very contagious. Very con and I request you one day, I want you to come to India and please guide us how to look at the society. And Indian society needs your guidance. And I will, from the behalf of Janasena, I would like to you know, welcome you to India and please guide us, give us your experience and wisdom to make a better society. Thank you. Sir, I would like to uh, take your permission. Uh, I would like to speak to them in my mother tongue. Yeah. Uh, Telugu matter than tea than a very good. What a summer sicker, and eh? Mundiga Telulo, in Chapudal Skinante, in the Gmianda Nichusan, Prati Wakalinako, Degirkochi, Mimal Kaulinchkoni, like thanks Chapal, Prati Shake and Chapati Okarki, like Chapkol, Daiches Miru, like at Manslondi, at the Antavaku Saji Pardana Telikani, but the Manslon, Daiches Mim, Prati Wakarki Peri Peruna, like Manspurti, Mandariki, like Protectoral Telegis. Carlos Napro, in the Carlos Napro, Euro Nago. Mirror, 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 Gabber Singh symbol ga do, vaka shrami kudu symbol in, vaka kasta pade avad symbol in. Dini ki matam le do, kolon le do, pranto le do, andar esu nari do, Bharat desu anta. Idi Bharat yudu symbol in, idi Bharat yudu ki gurtu, saman yudu ki gurtu, kasta pade avad gurtu in. Andi kine nene dini. I was like, I'm going to go to the cinema, i to Naku Rajiki alone, Rajiki alone, Kawal and the good Rajiki alone wouldn't go interest in this one down. So can I include a good thing together? Hollywood studio, the Ruth on Danga, theme parks, the Ruth Anga, Ekanoch in the Riskal Jade and then Kim. And I make Rajiki alone, which number one CPF Landy Petna Pro. I am going to buy a bike. 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 Naku Jagartun the Gani Bayonle Asala Bayonle Jagartun Archduchi Martlartan, Wakadik Pasal, Alujistan Gani, Wakanere in Tiskunapu, the Alanti person is in a Sare, named Kachitanga Martlartan. Kakbote Roses out and get a Wakaruts out and bench the Gadan Gundanakan of Bayonle.
మీరు నన్ను సినిమాల్లో డైలాగులు చెప్పమంటున్నారు నాకు సినిమాల్లో చెప్పడం ఇస్తుంది తప్ప నిజ జీవితంలో నాకు చెప్పడం ఇస్తుంది దాన్ని మీరు దయచేసి అది గుర్తించవలసిందిగా నేను కోరుకుంటున్నాను మీకు ఏదైనా సరే నిజ జీవితంలో నేను సినిమాని గౌరవిస్తాను కానీ లే కుదిరినంత వరకు అంటే యాక్చువల్గా సినిమా లాపడం మీ నేను చెప్తున్నాను ఇంకా నేను వచ్చింది సినిమాలు ఒక ఏడు సినిమాలు చేసి రిటైర్ అయిపోదాం అనుకున్నాను అంటే జానీ కానీ సక్సెస్ అయి ఉంటే మేము సినిమాలు వదిలేసేవాడి ఏమో కానీ అది దానికి రీజన్ ఏంటంటే నాకు నిజ జీవితంలో ఉన్న సమస్యలు సినిమాల్లో కానీ నేను నాకు పర్సనల్గా నాకు సంతోషం ఉండేది కదా అందువల్ల నాకు విరక్తికి వైరాగ్యంతో ఉండేవాడు సినిమాలు చేస్తున్నా కానీ అందుకని నాకు సినిమాలు అనేది నాకు ఎప్పుడు ఒక ఆనందం ఇవ్వలేదు కానీ సినిమాల ద్వారా ప్రజా సమస్యల్ని ముందుకు తీసుకెళ్ళ అంటే సినిమాల ద్వారా వచ్చిన ఇమేజ్ని నేను ప్రజల సమస్యలకు వాడ వాడటానికి నాకు నిజంగా ఆనందం కలిగించు అందువరకు నాకు సినిమాలు అంటే చాలా గౌరవం దానికోసం కుదిరినంత వరకు సినిమాలు చేస్తాను నాకు ఓపికలంత వరకు సినిమాలు చేస్తాను కాకపోతే ఒక్కసారి బాధ్యతలు ఎక్కువైపోయినప్పుడు మటుకు కొంతకాలం సినిమాలు దూరంగా ఉండాల్సి వస్తే అంతేగా నాకు సినిమాలు అంటే ఆ ఇష్టం అయితే లేదు ఈ సినిమా అంటే చాలా ఇష్టం ఉంది నాకు సినిమా అంటే చాలా ప్రేమ ఉంది దానివల్ల డబ్బు కూడా వస్తుంది అంటే నేను ఎందుకు పాలిటిక్స్ చేయగలను అంటే నాకు నా డబ్బుల మీద నాకు డబ్బులు అవసరం ఉందా కానీ డబ్బుల మీద మమ్మకారం లేదు అబ్బా నాకు సో డబ్బులే సంపాదించాలి అంటే డబ్బులే సంపాదించాలి అంటే చాలా పనులు ఉన్నాయి కాకపోతే భగవంతుడు నాకు ఇచ్చింది సినిమా కాబట్టి సినిమాని ప్రొడ్యూస్ చేస్తాను ఇంకోటి చేస్తాను డబ్బులు సంపాదిస్తాను కానీ నాకు చాలామంది రకరకాలుగా మాకు మీకు డొనేషన్స్ ఇస్తాం అవి ఇస్తామంటే నేను ఎందుకు దాన్ని ముందుకు తీసుకెళ్ళాలంటే నాకు చాలా బాధ్యత మీరు ఎంతో నమ్మకంతో నాకు ఇస్తారు ఎంతో నమ్మకంతో నాకు ఎవరైనా ఇచ్చినప్పుడు అది ఇంటెండెడ్ పర్పస్ అది ఏ లక్ష్యం అంటే ఏ అవసరార్థం ఇచ్చారో దేనికోసం అది ఇచ్చారో దానికి వెళ్ళినప్పుడు అది నాకు చాలా బాధ కలిగిస్తే ఆ పాపం నేను చేయలేను నిద్ర పట్టలేదు నాకు అందుకని నేను డబ్బులు తీసుకుంటా చాలాసార్లు ఆలోచిస్తాను అందుకని సాధ్యమైనంత వరకు నేను నా సొంత డబ్బులు పెట్టుకొని చేస్తాను అది ఇప్పుడు దాకా చేస్తాను రాజకీయాలు అప్పుడు చేస్తాను కానీ ఎప్పుడన్నా పొలిటికల్ ప్రాసెస్లో డబ్బులు అవసరం అవుతాయి కానీ అయితే దాన్ని ట్రాన్స్పరెన్సీ ఉన్న రోజునే పారదర్శకత ఉన్న రోజునే నేను దాన్ని అందరికీ తెలియాలి ఒక రూపాయి నా దగ్గరికి వచ్చినప్పుడు ఆ రూపాయి ఎలా వెళ్తుందో తెలియాలి తప్ప ఎక్కడ ఖర్చు అవుతుందో తెలియాలి కానీ అది తీసుకెళ్ళి వ్యక్తిగతంగా ఎవరు వాడుకున్నా కానీ దాన్ని కఠినంగా చూడాల్సి వస్తుంది అది ఇంక్లూడింగ్ నాతో సహా అందుకని అలాంటి సిస్టమ్స్ ఎదురైన రోజునే నేను దాన్ని ముందుకు తీసుకెళ్తాను అలా ఇందాక రైతుల గురించి మాట్లాడుతూ ఉన్నారు నేను నేను స్పెషల్ స్టేటస్ గురించి స్పెషల్ కేటగిరీ స్టేటస్ గురించి ఇవన్నీ నా ప్రా బాధ కోపం అసహనం ఏంటంటే రాజకీయ నాయకులు ద ప్రాబ్లం అని వాంట్ టెల్ యూ ఎలక్షన్స్కి వచ్చినప్పుడేమో చాలా సింపుల్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఆహా అది నేను చెప్పింది వాళ్ళు చెప్పింది కదా రాజకీయాల్లోకి వచ్చినప్పుడు మా పార్టీకి మీరు ఓటు వేయండి అనుకున్నప్పుడు చాలా సింపుల్ భాష ఉంటుంది మాకు అన్నీ అర్థమయ్యే భాష మీకు ఇస్తాం మీకేమో మీ ఊరికి అవి తెస్తాం మీకు మీ ఏరియాకి ఇది తెస్తాం మీ ఏరియాకి రైల్వే లైన్ తెస్తాం మీ ఏరియాకి నువ్వు ఉద్యోగాలు వస్తాయి అంటారు మళ్ళీ ఎలక్షన్స్కి వచ్చేసి గెలిచాక మీరు అడగండి మొత్తం డేటా అండ్ స్టాటిస్టిక్స్ సహా చెప్తారు నాకు అర్థం కాదు అది మీరు మీరు అడి మేము ఓట్లు అడిగినప్పుడేమో మాకు చాలా అర్థమయ్యే భాషలో చెప్పారు కదా మరి మా సమస్యలు మీరు మేరు మా ఏ ఇష్యూస్ అయితే సాల్వ్ చేస్తున్నారు వాటి గురించి అడిగేటప్పుడు మాకు ఎందుకంటే ఈ డేటాను స్టాటిస్టిక్స్ నాకు అడగాలనిపిస్తుంది చిరా మీరు ఒకటే పెట్టుకోండి ఓట్లకి చాలా సింపుల్ భాషలో వచ్చేవాళ్ళు డేటా అండ్ స్టాటిస్టిక్స్ మా ఇస్తున్నారంటే వాళ్ళు అబద్ధాలు చెప్తున్నారు అంతే దానికి వేరే తిరుగు లేదు దానికి నేను అధికారం అనేది అంతిమ లక్ష్యం కాదు 
ప్రజా సమస్యల గురు పరిష్కారమే అంతిమ లక్ష్యం అవ్వాలి తప్ప అది రా అది అధికారంలో ఉండొచ్చు ఉండకపోవచ్చు కానీ ఒక పొలిటికల్ పార్టీని ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ చేసినప్పుడు అది నేను సాధించేది ఏంటి ఏమనుకుంటానంటే వీ హ్యావ్ టు అడ్రస్ ద ఇష్యూస్ సమస్యలని పరిష్ ఎట్లా పరిష్కరించాలి అన్నిసార్లు అధికారంలో కూర్చున్నాడు పనులు అవ్వవు మీ అది నమ్మను ఎప్పుడు నీకు ఒక బలమైన భావజాలం ఉండాలి ఎందుకు నువ్వు ఈ పని చేస్తున్నావు నువ్వు ఎందుకు రాజకీయాల్లోకి ఉన్నావు నువ్వు దేనికోసం నిలబడగలవు దేనికోసం నిలబడలేవు ఈ భావజాలం నీలో లేనప్పుడు నువ్వు రాజకీయాల్లోకి ఉండటం అనవసరం అందుకని నన్ను నేను ఒక ట్వంటీ సినిమా అందరికీ నేను సినిమాల నుంచి వచ్చాను పాలిటిక్స్కి వచ్చాను అనుకుంటాను బట్ యాక్చువల్ నేను ఒక ఇరవై సంవత్సరాలు నన్ను నేను ట్రైన్ చేసుకున్నాను అసలు ముందు నేను నిలబడగలనా నేను కష్టాలు తట్టుకోగలనా నాకు డబ్బులు లేకపోతే నేను ఉండగలనా తట్టుకోగలనా ఇవన్నీ నేను టెస్ట్ చేసుకున్న తర్వాతే పరీక్షలు పెట్టుకున్న తర్వాతే నాకు నేను పర్మిషన్ ఇచ్చుకున్నాను నువ్వు వెళ్ళచ్చు రాజకీయాల్లోకి దెబ్బలు తిన్నా కానీ నిలబడతావు అన్న నమ్మకం నా మీద నాకు వచ్చాక నేను రాజకీయాల్లోకి వచ్చాను జనసేన అంతిమ లక్ష్యం అధికారం కాదు జనసేన అంతిమ లక్ష్యం ప్రజాశ్రేయస్సు కానీ జనసేనకి జనసేన అంతిమ లక్ష్యం అధికారం కాదు జరిగితే జరుగుతుంది జరగకపోతే జరుగుతుంది దాని కొంచెం ఇంట్రెస్ట్ కాదు నా అంతిమ లక్ష్యం అధికారం అలాగే నేను మీ నుంచి కాంట్రిబ్యూట్ కాంట్రిబ్యూషన్ కోరుకునేది జనసేనకి మీ ఆలోచన కావాలి నాకు మీలో నుంచి బలమైన నాయకత్వం కావాలి మీలో నుంచి కమిటెడ్ యంగ్ లీడర్షిప్ కావాలి ఎంతసేపు అందరు చెప్తారు దేశంలో చాలా యూత్ లీడర్షిప్ అండి అంటారు యూత్ లీడర్షిప్ అంటే ఎవరు వీళ్ళందరూ ఆ రాజకీయ నాయకులు పిల్లలు వాళ్ళ పిల్లలు వీళ్ళ పిల్లలే తప్ప ఇంకా మిగతా వాళ్ళు ఎవరు యూత్ కాదు మీరందరూ యూత్ కాదు వాళ్ళకి యూత్ ఎవరంటే వాళ్ళ పిల్లలు వాళ్ళ పిల్లల పిల్లలు వాళ్ళ మన వాళ్ళు ఇవే తప్ప మిగతా వాళ్ళు ఎవరు యూత్ కాదు అది మారాలి మన దేశంలో అది మారాలి అంటే దానికి ముందడుగు నేను వేస్తున్నాను ఈ రోజున నన్ను అందరు అడుగుతున్నారు నువ్వు ఎందుకు పార్టీ ఎక్స్పాండ్ చేయవని నాకు ఎక్స్పాండ్ చేయాలంటే నాకు కమిటెడ్ వ్యక్తులు కావాలి నేను నీలాంటి వాళ్ళ కోసం వెయిట్ చేస్తున్నాను నీలాంటి వాళ్ళ కోసం మాట కాదు నిలబడు ఇక్కడ కూర్చొని మాట్లాడటం కాదు నిలబడు ఈ రోజు నువ్వు అన్న మాటకి నిలబడు నిలబడి చూపిస్తున్నాను అండ్ నేను పాలిటిక్స్కి వచ్చినప్పుడు నేను ఏదో ఆరు నెలలకో సంవత్సరంకో రెండు సంవత్సరాలకు కాదు ఐ సార్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ పాతి సంవత్సరాలు నన్ను నేను నా కాలాన్ని నా జీవితాన్ని నేను మనసు దేశం శ్రేయస్సు కోసం ప్రజా శ్రేయస్సు కోసం నేను పని చేయడానికి నిర్ణయించుకున్నాకి నేను రాజకీయాల్లోకి వచ్చాను అందుకని నాకు ఎన్ని కష్టాలైనా నాకు చాలా సహనం ఉంది చాలా ఓపిక ఉంది దెబ్బలు తీసుకుంటాను దెబ్బ కొట్టడం తెలుసు దెబ్బ తీయడం కూడా తెలుసు దెబ్బ ఎలా తీసుకుంటానో కాకపోతే అది వ్యక్తిగతంగా లేదు నాకు ఎవరి మీద వ్యక్తిగతంగా నిజంగా నాకు ఎవరి మీద కోపం ఉండదు కాకపోతే ప్రజలకి మీరు ప్రామిస్ చేసి మీరు మాట తప్పించు పట్టించుకోకుండా వెళ్ళిపోతే మటుకు నాకు చాలా బాధ చాలా కోపం చాలా అసహనం ఉంటుంది దానికోసం నేను ఎంత స్థాయికైనా పోరాటం చేయడానికి రెడీగా ఉంటాను అలాగే మీకు ఆఖరి మాటగా నేను సెలవు తీసుకుంటున్నాను ఒకే ఒకసారి సాయి ప్రోలు సుబ్బారావు గారిది ఏ దేశం ఏగినా ఎందు కాలిడినా పొగడరాని తల్లి భూమి భారతమే మన దేశం గురించి చెప్పబోయే ముందు ఒక్కసారి మనం ఏదైతే మనకి హోస్ట్ దేశం ఉందో ఏదైతే మనకు ఆతిథ్యం ఇచ్చిన దేశం ఉందో దాన్ని గౌరవించడం భారత సాంప్రదాయం ఇందాక నేను చెప్పాను కదా చిన్నప్పుడు నేను నేర్చుకుంది ఫర్ మీ యాజ్ ఎ కిడ్ అమెరికా వాజ్ ద కంట్రీ విచ్ గేవ్ లైట్ టు ద వరల్డ్ త్రూ థామస్ ఆల్వా ఎడిసన్ దట్స్ అ లవ్ అండ్ రెస్పెక్ట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఫర్ అమెరికా ఐ విష్ పీస్ అండ్ స్ట్రెంగ్త్ అండ్ గాడ్ బ్లెస్ అమెరికా
and this would be my last words for this for tonight ye desham egina endu kaaledina pogadara ni talli bhoomi bharatani antaru ye tallaithe manaki janman ichindo ఏ తల్లి అయితే మనకి ఈ రూపురేఖలు ఇచ్చిందో ఆ తల్లికి మనం జై జైలు కొట్టుకుని ఎలా వెళ్ళిపోతాం అందుకని ఒకసారి ఎలుగెత్తి భారత్ మతాకి భారత్ మతాకి భారత్ మతాకి జై Thank you so much Mr. Pawan Kalyangar. That was such an inspiring speech. We still have a few things going on. Please settle down in your seats. He's still here. Please settle down. He's still here. He's still here. Please settle down. Thank you so much Mr. Pawan Kalyan Garu that was such an